Hello everyone. Welcome to Android Tools Clean DOF. I hope everyone is doing well and and a safe home. Uh, also, I am waiting for she decide to join currently. I hope she can join soon. Uh, can you share the pad as well so we can see what's on the agenda? Okay, people can have people joining in. Do you want to go around introductions? Oh, okay. So I should, I should go first and let, let's, let's take, take, take a lead from there. So hi, I'm Samik Jain and I'm a recent graduate. Uh, currently, you know, like was finding a job, but finally settled now. And I have worked around Kotlin before and I'm taking meetings uh, in the channel and stuff. So there's what I do normally, not much. So, anyone want to take next? Hi, I'm uh, Emop One. Um, I joined the Android Tools team to look at, at some of the Kotlin work uh, that's been going on and coordinate that um, because needed it for a new game to package in Debian. So Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Sunil Mohan Adapa. Uh, I'm a developer of the Freedom Box project. Uh, I've been working on it for several years now, and that's my passion. I've been <clears throat> I've been involved uh, in it since almost the beginning, and we made some pretty good progress. Um, with the pandemic starting, we wanted uh, people to be able to communicate over video conferencing uh in a pretty good manner jitsi seems like a pretty good solution for that um jitsi meet that is uh so we wanted to get the jitsi meet into freedom box and uh, that drove me to contribute to uh kotlin and this this project hope to be working uh on improving kotlin plus Gradle. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hi, this is uh, the loudspeaker. Uh, my name is Raman, and I worked with uh, Debian last year on Summer of Code. I worked on Gradle. Uh, I worked alongside uh, Samyak and C D S I and Hans. So now let's see, Codelin is done. Now let's hope that Gradle also gets done and gets packaged. Hans, you might want to go next. That's an event. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hans. Um, uh, I've been working on Android tools since the beginning and i um, happy to see I'll, it expand more and more, though I've uh, been a little less involved, but it's still uh it's still very important to be um to since um android is in the right configuration uh a free software mobile phone platform and and uh so it makes sense that we should support working with android from in debian uh, official so that's it Hi, I'm Pierre. I, I'm a developer in the Debian Med team and also in the Debian Java team, uh, mainly because we have many Java applications in the Debian Med team. And when well, I get the invitation for the book today, so thank you. Uh, I'm here to, to hear about you, what you're doing, and uh, I'm also pretty interested in what you're doing with Gradle right now. That's nice, we need more creative people. <laughs> so who's gonna go next? I can go. Uh, sorry for being late. I am Chirayu Desai, aka C Desai in most places. 
uh, I was a GSOC student with the Android tools team like five years ago, five, six years ago. And uh, I've been uh, working on uh, the Android part ever since. Uh, it's what got me into Debian. And I've been mentoring students ever since. I mostly focus on the Android side of things. So uh, stuff like ADB, Fastboot, and some of the other things you need to work with Android apps. And excited to see uh, these many people here. So it all seemed like Dimash, like if I'm pronouncing correctly, I'm sorry. Like you're gonna speak up. Oh yeah, Dimash here. You're currently muted. Yeah. Anyone else? Seemingly was facing some problem. The mic and stuff. So let's see. You're muted, Adimas. I don't know. Like, I'm muted. You're still <laughs> muted. Nope. This uh, is your ups and downs side. Oh. In Jitsi. Yeah, exactly. Uh, never mind. Uh, you fix that. We, we're gonna go. We're gonna go into Latin lunch again. Uh, so you'll be happy to have a time constraint. So let's move on that. Then that what we're having today. So like of course, welcome to both. And secondly, what all what all happened after last year? So we have we glad we did both. Like unfortunately, saying that we will be glad we did both last year. We got people joining us for Kotlin. We have, we, we got more from that uh, from the time. It, it's been a year now, and uh, it's been and it's been a great help. Uh, honestly, like you know, people joining us, and this time we have we have more people joining us. So yeah. So if then any uh, point specifically rather than then that Kotlin is a new now uh, to me. Is there anything that I'm gonna share? Uh, what happened with the team? See this side. Maybe you want to go with uh, what with the Android packages. That what we're doing. Anything currently? Yeah. First, uh, first of all, it's the big, a big, big achievement that Kotlin was finally ready for upload and is in the new queue. So, kudos to everyone. Uh, and. Uh, as for platform tools, uh, or rather the Android packages, uh, that has been the focus of Summer of Code this year. Uh, we have one student working on it, uh, Pgan, P-G-A-N, a.k.a. Pratik. Uh, he's not here today since he had to attend another uh, GSOC seminar, uh, and I think that one wasn't being recorded. Uh, but he's done a lot of good work this summer uh, to give up quick background uh, we uh, google develops things in a uh, like a multitude of git repositories like they have hundreds of git repositories in debian we took the 2050 whatever we needed and we started creating individual source packages out of them but uh, that led to a big dependency loop and complicated staged uploads uh, so for this year, we went with an alternative solution of just do it the Google way. Just put everything in one Debian source repository, even if it's multiple upstream Git repositories. And most of the summer was uh, involved in setting that up. 
so we started by uh, just taking the existing source code and moving it to the new format, making it work. And then we did incremental improvements all through the summer. And finally, uh, as of now, we have an Android platform tool source package, which has the previous version ready for upload. And even the latest version is pretty much done, which was super fast. We did two versions in one GSOC uh, at a time when GSOC has uh, had a time reduction. And usually we would struggle doing just one version in one GSOC with multiple students. Uh, so kudos to Pratik and everyone who helped. And we also have another source package in the works, which is Android build tools. Uh, and the separation is just basically doing what Google does. They have a separate platform tool zip, which has its own source code. They have a separate build tool zip, which has a different set of source code, a different set of branches. And so we're just trying to do things their way to make it easier to update. And uh, we are planning to upload them, uh, hopefully, uh, sometime next month if everything is in order uh, yeah uh, that's it that's uh, hopefully a quick overview yeah i wanted to add one little thing which is that um that upstream has done a few things that which make this much easier and possible which is nice because uh basically they started tagging platform tools releases where before we we didn't even know what tag what, what source they don't have source server balls and no tags so now we have a tag and we can do all this amazing stuff so fair enough um i could just give you a quick summary of the kotlin uh work so yeah uh starting off the year with uh samyx um uh gsoc from last year uh kind of wrapping up that in the autumn uh then the basically that got as far as uh kotlin being able to get to stage so we've, we had a whole bootstrap problem basically we, we had um uh, we had to use kotlin from upstream to build uh, our kotlin um and uh something got that as far as then building the next uh, kotlin from itself um then we had a bit of a hiatus until uh, Sunil managed to solve some problems for us uh, on the actual hard work of Kotlin compilation errors uh, for when it's compiling itself. And then that got us to stage uh, one, which is where Kotlin from Debian can build itself. Uh, at the moment, we have uploaded that to uh, new. Um, as of a couple of months ago, obviously with the release going on, no one's actually, I don't believe we've heard anything back from that. Um, and it's a big package to review. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's good to have Copeland in you. Just mentioning and thanks for Andrew, who is not here, but he uploaded the package. Uh, uh, but but again, like Kotlin, it's being a great journey, and uh, like I would specifically like to mention Sunil here, who has done a great work. Like I, though it's uh, though he says that is the it's the ending of the finishing touches, but again, uh, like the the project was you know in still for a couple of months because you know I was finding a job and you know finishing my graduation, but again like he came up and he took the task and it, and finally completed it. So so that's a good thing. So I would like to mention yeah. that. Uh, Okay, so what's next in the agenda is I think pretty much covered that what happened in GSOC, what was the present status of Android packages. Well, and, so I, was, yeah, uh, I added, um, are there any new packages in Bullseye that weren't in Buster? Uh, maybe Hans, you know. Probably a couple. Like off the top of my head, I'm trying to think. I, I think they're just some smaller utils. Yeah, just what would you advertise is the as the as the big new thing i mean it's it's hard for me to keep track actually uh okay. i know one thing i do know is that the uh rush this is mostly rush's work but which is that the repo so if you're doing android development there's or you uh there's this tool called repo which is kind of like android's git <clears throat> and that is kept quite current now by rush and and uh, I think that means that we can start before, if you look at like um, 
the, the how to's for building Android, they're like, download this random thing and throw it in like tilde slash bin and use it from there. But now I think people can say, you know, you can say app get install repo and then you can, um, and then you can build uh, Android. And, and that's the, it, it, to me is like one of the things that we're really trying to do here instead of like, you know, oh, you want to put a ROM on your phone, download this mystery binary from the internet <laughs> and hopefully it's all right. But now you can say, oh no, app get install fast boot. And um, it's uh, right there. Um, so I, that, I think that kind of, and then with the platform tools, which was not bullseye, but that means we'll be able to keep that up to date so that it works with as many devices as possible. That's the general trend I see. We have Royce here today, but I think his mark is working. So, but yeah, thanks Raj for the work. Like uh, we, we haven't met, uh, like I haven't met personally Raj anytime, but again, I see uh, many comments and the CIBL status on channel. Uh, yeah, Raj has done a great work. Uh, moving forward uh, to the uh, next agendas, we are, the agenda was what are the status of present and red packages and present status of Gretel and Kotlin, which I think uh, CDSI and EMOP cover respectively. But again, like we have a Gradle status and like see, Emma, you wanna uh, hop in here and wanna talk about the funding thing? Uh, yeah, so uh, Gradle is basic, uh, approximately uh, the same position it was at last same time last year. Um, so it was uh, dependent, it, it, the next version of Gradle does depend on um, Kotlin being accepted. So that's okay. But now that Kotlin is in new, um, the, the, the impetus is there to now maybe uh, get Gradle wrapped up. Um, the current version is 4.4 in the archives. That's the latest version that uh, doesn't require Co Kotlin to build it itself. Uh, and has, a, I believe, a bunch of backported patches as well to uh, support the next version being able to um, be built. Uh, so Raman, um, no, sorry, loudspeaker um, <laughs> worked on um, uh, packaging 6.4 um, for the, the one of the GSOCs again. Um, but as I say, there, there hasn't really been much progress since the end of that. Um, and the upstream is now on 7.2. Uh, so we are starting to get behind. Um, and the faster we can get Gradle in, um, then Gradle can bump the next version of Kotlin and Kotlin can bump the next version of Gradle and then we can have finally some uh, up-to-date uh, build tools which uh, as Pierre joining us from uh, another team uh, same, same reason I, I joined here last year it, the, the JVN tools just get around a bit um, <laughs> uh, so yeah so the uh, I was I quite enjoyed the funding talk from um, well, uh, from a couple of days ago, that was ab about uh, the funding available from Freaksian um, and how to coordinate uh, other funding ideas and flesh them out. So I went ahead and wrote up um, the kind of issue that we had, which was uh, the idea being that uh, we just need someone to go and use the upstream build tools to um, build it, so to build the latest version of Gradle um, and uh, then do it again without the Gradle Enterprise to, uh, Gradle Enterprise Gradle plugin. Um, this is a tool that used to be called BuildScan. Um, it's entire, it's theoretically entirely optional. Um, upstreamers have, have said that it is possible to remove, but they haven't really given us much help in how to remove um, the plugin from the source entirely. Um, uh, I might be able to add a few bits there. Uh, so I took a look at what uh, what this uh, enterprise plugin is uh, supposed to do. I think uh, once we make a build locally, we would be able to uh, upload some of the um, instrumentation done during the build into the uh, enterprise server. It helps with the uh, 
debugging one uh, so we can look at a graph of uh, what are the uh, what are the targets that needs to be built and so on um, and in addition to that it, you can do some time based analysis and and etc so this does sound entirely optional to me uh, <laughs> um, and I, I I also looked at the source code patch that we have currently for removing the enterprise plugin it seems all right uh, and it seems not too complicated at also um, so I was a bit hopeful when I when I started trying this uh, girdle build um, uh, the first uh, uh, problem I ran into was it was requiring uh, Kotlin 1.3.71 um, and this is not the version that we currently packaged um, but I think we can deal with that okay so we can set set aside that problem I suppose and then uh, look at the other stuff but when uh, I, when I saw that and, and proceeded further, uh, I ran into some mundane problem which didn't relate, look related to enterprise plugin or um, or anything at all. It must be one of the one of the simple patches that we have done uh, <clears throat> or the environment that we have. Uh, so uh, I remain hopeful that this is not a, a huge mountain of work. Uh, it's just that uh, we just have to get into it and you know um, it might be difficult to debug maybe but uh, but not definitely a lot of work remaining um, uh, uh, in my yeah. opinion yeah, yeah definitely um, thanks for explaining what it's actually used for <laughs> so yeah the uh, I, so yeah, I, maybe nothing will come of the uh, freaks in funding. Maybe it will. Um, either they'll get someone to work on it or they won't. Um, but I found it was beneficial to write it out because it's quite a it's quite a specific piece of work um, that we have struggled to do, um, or struggled to have anyone time to just dedicated look at it. So even if nothing comes of the funding, we know exactly what the next steps are, exactly what the um, acceptance criteria would look like to be able to move on with the actual grade or packaging part, um, which is basically just stuck on this. Uh, but by the sounds of it, there's also Kotlin version issues um, to go for after. Right. There's actually uh, many things hard coded, version numbers of many things are hard coded. I, I guess the Kotlin issue can be fixed oh, yeah. using that. We can remove that hard coding. Right, uh, and and yes, yeah, similar stuff with what uh, Sano ended up doing with the Kotlin package just to neaten it up again before upload, um, was there were lots of hard coding stuff just to get it uh, sorted in the patches and then it just did a massive refactor. <laughs> uh, I don't want to know how long that took um, to um, neaten it up and uh, yeah, make the version number um, uh, editable basically. Uh, one crucial thing that would be useful there that's not in the, um, uh, that's not in the uh, package as it is in the repo at the moment is that um, we've got a bootstrap script now in the Kotlin package that can be completely reused for Gradle. So uh, previously, I think the bootstrap packages were like manually made up of a existing jars just put in the right place. Um, and so the new bootstrap script will allow us to just say, we need this jar, this version, um, off you go, download it, give me a deb uh, that we can use in, in the pre-upload step. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I also want to give a quick uh, update of where Kotlin itself is uh, in, in relation with Gradle. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh kotlin is currently at 1.3.31 uh, i believe um and uh, if 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 gradle really needs 1.3.71 i believe we can actually move to 1.3.71 in kotlin without having the gradle um so the the work required for that is uh, trying to figure out uh, uh, how the build system changed between uh, 1.3.31 and 1.3.71 and then um, do the similar changes to our patches um, 
which which are converting the Kotlin uh, um, Gradle scripts to um, to Groovy Gradle scripts. And then we'd be good to go with uh, 1.3.71. I mean, it, it'll not be too much of an effort. Uh, so uh, the, the number of versions that seem to have changed is too much, but I don't think, uh, you know, a lot of build system itself has changed a lot. So it's it's a doable effort that if that is required. And uh, once that is done, I think if the Gradle comes in, we can drop a lot of patches and, and uh, whatever quick moving pace that we're seeing in Portland itself, that's not at all a problem for us, I think. Once the uh, 50, 60 patches that we have, uh, we are currently carrying drop. And then um, th and then there are very few things that we're doing in, in our own uh, Debian packaging work. Uh, those are completely uh, handleable and uh, we can we can quickly move between major versions of Kotlin as well once once Gradle is dropped. So Kotlin is in decent shape and it can also help out Gradle with the newest version required in Gradle, uh, uh, I think, if, if, we, if we really need it. Uh, just, for the, just for the quick thing, like I'm not sure, but uh, we didn't do 1.3.7 because it, it, had, it is very much heavier in terms of source code with 1.3.3. Uh, the uh, the workaround that uh, we made at uh, last year was you know to uh, backwards only those uh, functionalities that were important to 1.3.3, then work on Gradle, and then you know elastically you know move to a newer Kotlin version that's actually needed. So basically that would save us the time you know to package the whole 1.3.7, then move to Gradle, and then do then then uh, then you know then update Kotlin again. So basically, I think I think it would be a better idea to again there might be other constraints, but the to backport only those functionality that's needed is a point for because as far as I remember, there were five six functions that we needed. But again, like that's easy to say rather than rather than done. But again, backporting seems much an easier uh, way out. Okay. Imo, you were going to say something. But do you want to say anything or no? Uh, so, no, I've got nothing to add. Okay. Uh, you're suggesting uh, um, backporting Kotlin features that are uh, that are required by latest Gradle uh, to 1.3.31? By latest Gradle, I mean Gradle 6.4 that Raman was working on. Uh, because uh, because the thing is, uh, if, one, if, we, if, we, if we are somehow able to make 1.3.31 work, with 6.4, then Gradle 6.4 will help us that uh, help us drop almost 50, 60 passages that we we all wrote for Kotlin. So uh, again, it will be it will be you know it will be helpful for us because we have the KDS functionality available. So we don't have to you know patch many of the files again and again and translate that to Groovy. So mm -hmm. so that's so that's the most main uh, goal about it. So we should try to build Gradle with uh, the the Kotlin version we have, which is one point three point three one. Yeah, with the backported functionality. But okay, Imo and Raman, you are Yeah, that's a question. We'll have to we'll have less groovy files to deal with this way. Yeah. So I was just going to add that um, that is exactly the the, the point we got to at the last um, GSOC from 2020 uh, was that both Gradle and Kotlin have been heavily patched um, in order to avoid the Kotlin build dependency and use the version of Gradle that's in Debian right now. So hopefully by getting Kotlin in, then we can delete half of the um, uh, patches and get, by getting the next Gradle version, we can delete the other half and hopefully yeah, as uh, Sunil said, that means that the future version upgrades won't, won't be too difficult. It's just a case of getting over that initial hump. And that seems like a fair thing to say. Even I just want to add something on the little issue again. I love how they're slightly dependent to each other. Sorry, yeah. I... <laughs> so, okay. Uh, moving ahead, uh, what we have other things on the agenda. So yeah, uh, like there was uh, there was one thing I like to mention. The agenda was welcoming newbies and how 
well then to get started and about the tool about the team so first of all uh, what uh, what i you know what i'm seeing from in here is that uh, like we are having monthly meetings again but the meetings uh, the meetings weren't structured before uh, we you know we hop in and we we, we have a conversation i kind of it's good but again we need to have a structured thing uh, but uh, about the last time in the last two last meeting i guess i i have made a roughly structure if you can follow it and apart from that we need a time constraint because of course we can have a discussion afterwards but again like people have to leave people need people need basically a fixed you know schedule to work upon so like what's say like you know from the upcoming meetings we can have an hour dedicated uh, of course we can have a pool or something and we can have an hour dedicated for the meetings and whether it whether it's been whether it's been on jitsi or whether it's been on iosh so what's it would you have um like that on a regular basis like once every month once every two months or um or would you have it uh, when there's some major progress to discuss or something no we have these monthly meetings right that we, okay. we tend to have at the end of thursday of every month so yeah uh, so we can of course like this sort of this sort meetings goes on but it's just for three months okay see this is another say something go ahead uh, i think one quick thing thing we have done is just have them entirely flexible so we'll all try to check in to the channel at that particular time every month and if there's something major to discuss we can always hop on jitsi and uh, figure that out in and within an hour or so and if not we can uh, do some form of asynchronous uh, text check ins where if somebody has any concerns or something they would like to bring up uh, they can just post it to the channel and Uh, we'd know that everyone would check in at that time of the month even if they are busy at other times yeah i think that has helped with um being able to join in uh just being able to have like the first 5 minutes of ilc chat of oh we having a bigger conversation or is it just a small catch up i can follow uh, without having to set up audio and things uh, exactly we can have those nicely and then quickly done with it and basically if something if we have a bigger issue to talk about of course we can hop in this any time so so let's so start uh, a thing that you can work on it is a plus and tips from everyone i see time okay we need to quickly finish because we are running late in time so there are there quite uh, so again there was another agenda like uh, are there is there any future for invite teams like you know uh, are we planning something uh, uh, for the next release uh, like any and also about the uh, about the packages that you know that is going to roll up to one like you said you mentioned uh, that you know many of the invite packages are going to go and go into one uh, one main package so so what's about that so i can just cover uh, that quickly and maybe also answer some of the questions at the same time if that's fine sure sure uh, yeah so uh, we can divide the current android tools packages into uh, a few sections uh, one is platform tools uh, which is what google uses as platform tools uh, they have separate tags for them now which makes our lives easier Uh, it has things like adb which you use to interact with your phone and uh, install apps just get a shell on the device and run whatever you want and there is another tool known as fastboot which is what is usually used to uh, install the operating system on devices uh, and there are a few more things but these two are the main and uh, having them updated to the latest is essential for to keep them working on newer devices uh, then there's a build tools uh, which is for app developers it's what's used to build applications so part of it uh, so there are tools like app which deals with the resources and uh, there's a bunch of other tools sadly there are no dedicated tags for these right now so we are just using the generic uh, android tags which are what's uh, what what runs on the phones uh, we are just using the same tags uh, so far 
Uh, then there's a few miscellaneous packages, which are just nice to have. And I don't think upstream releases them as uh, separate packages, but like Hans mentioned earlier, people would need them and they would download random binaries. So it's better that, to have them in a proper package and uh, they're not uh, too much work. Uh, so that's, those are the current set of packages and we are simply trying, we were all, we were handling them all the exact same way earlier. But what we're doing now is having a clear separation of just uh, doing the same thing Google is doing. If they're building platform tools from platform tools, do that. If they are building build tools separately, do that. And that comes to the NDK question. Uh, so Google has an entirely different team for the NDK and they build NDK using their own scripts, their own, some form of a custom build system. It, probably based on something existing but it's still entirely different from the work that we do here and as such we have uh, never looked into properly packaging ndk because uh, part of the ndk is also a fork uh, their google's fork of tool chains such as clang and uh, all the support pieces around it so that's a lot of work uh, similar with the emulator there's an uh, there's somebody working on emulator and emulator gets its own branches as well and uh, Android simulator is a fork of QMU. And these days it is uh, very tied in with Android Studio, uh, which is their fork of the IntelliJ IDE, which yet is handled by yet again, one other, uh, yet another team uh, at Google. And it also has a complicated build system and it's hard to package. So the Studio and Emulator, I think these days are intertwined together. And it's a custom fork of QMU uh, with a bunch of changes, making it uh, not so hard, not so easy to package. Uh, does answer, that answer, answer the questions? Okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just also add to what you said about the packaging the other things. Um, I think when we started, that was we were kind of thinking uh, we did a lot of experiments um, around trying to include as much of it as possible in Debian, and included these packages, um, which just are uh, in contrib and download the Google binaries. Um, I think at this point, that's one thing. I think uh, based on that experience and um, and uh, the current state of things, I think that the uh, way forward there is is um debian packages for like the very core utilities like we mentioned adb fast boot blah, blah blah and also then there's uh, the android uh component package manager thing called sdk manager so um but then i think for everything else it makes more sense to go with the method uh, that um, the Android's rebuild project is doing, which is mostly uh, also a Debian developer. Um, I don't know how he says it, but Buke, Boik, B-E-U-C. -E um, yeah, thanks. Um, and that is uh, to do free software rebuilds just using the Google, um, I mean, the way that Google does it. Um, and then so this i mean there's these are kind of downloadable but I, I think that to get it to we just need to get them done and then in our once we get sdk manager packaged in debian we can have it by default use that that as the package source and so when you do sdk manager and install ndk you get a free ndk that matches that's functionally the same as the google binaries but free software I think that's the way forward. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is, uh, yeah, is there anything else after SDK manager that would need to be included to support that workflow? Um, As in like, uh, do we need IntelliJ packaged? IntelliJ. <laughs> CE edition, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, it, if we have SDK manager, we can install binaries. Uh, that's all we need uh, in terms of the Debian side. 
But to actually have it guaranteed, you know, Debian quality DFSG, like real free software, um, <clears throat> it depends a lot on which thing you're building. Like, uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of what how Google builds is they precompile binaries and they commit them into the source like to Git, and then they so they they call them prebuilts, and so we're not those aren't you know using that in your build system is not not okay and by Debian standards. Um, so it's kind of like to get it to Debian standards and Android rebuilds, it's like replacing these built pre-builds. Um, and I think, I mean, really, it's probably easier to contribute to the Android rebuild stuff than to the Debian packages. So people who want to see this, like, because you could just basically go read, you're like, oh, oh there should be a free NDK. Go read the official how-to and how to build it. and build it and then and then add the recipe to the Android rebuilds project and and that's it. Um, okay. So. Yeah, so um, there's no need for someone who wants to be able to well, if someone wants to use uh, like Android Studio or the uh, emulator or something. Um, there's no need for them to like join the team and try and package it the Debian way right now. Um, It'd be better to get SDK manager sorted so that then those recipes can be contributed to Android uh, rebuilds project. Interesting. Yeah. I, and I just, the last thing I would say is that SDK manager is not very complicated, but it's like insane. The source code's insane. So I've started writing a pure Python replacement as part under F droid. So that's another place where people can contribute. It's, it's, it's kind of alpha right now. But with probably a couple of days work, we could have a complete replacement. So if anyone, that's a place someone could contribute. And then that gives us a lot of flexibility because we can say, uh, you know, we can say, oh, you know, don't, you know, only use the free software ones unless you specifically say, use the, the proprietary binaries. Uh, is that a uh, nice uh, bookended chunk of work that could be written up as a funding proposal maybe? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, if someone if, wants to do that, I would help time them. Time to work on it itself directly. I would happy. I'd be happy to help someone to put that together. Um, I don't know of a funder offhand that would be interested in funding, but I'm happy to. I've written grants, and I'm happy to help people do them. Okay, then we are almost on time. It's about three minutes. I, I, I would request everyone to you know, stay back after the call because, uh, like, if, if it's okay by everyone, we can take a group photo for the buff. As well as, thank you everyone for joining us, like, who is watching us from the live stream and everyone here. And I hope that we all do this thing in person next year, but like, like whatever pandemic, pandemic has hard for us, but that's there. So, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Next Where year in Kosovo. Next... Where is the next Thank you. Thank you. Kosovo. Kosovo. Wow, wow. Let's, let's go. So, okay. Uh, so, we can, we can do that. Primo, you would like to speak something? Uh, yeah, I was just going to uh, direct everyone to the uh, Debian Android Tools uh, IRC channel, uh, which is where most of the chat happens uh, there is a mailing list uh, which is more for kind of announcements and sharing with Debian Java team really anytime we want to interact with them we kind of just write on the mailing list oh, also to mention like if someone like was watching us maintains meatbot or something like our, our channel needs meatbot but we, we are not able to you know, get it so <laughs> if someone can invite meatbot for us big thing yeah. to do <laughs> Please, someone listening, yeah, just uh, set it up on our channel for us. That would be great. Yeah, we, we, we are in need of meat for this period. <laughs> we kind of do a manual meat bot in IRC at the moment. <laughs> the, the agendas that we are having are, you know, like are from what meat bot follows, but manually we are doing that. So, okay then, like, it's okay that I take, uh, that I screenshot a picture for everyone here. Okay then. I'm doing it in three, two. And this was all for the Android tools packaging team in the Build Buff this year. I will stop the stream now and we will have a break. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone.